Okay, so the last speaker of today's uh, morning session is uh, Kumas Kabe. Uh, he will talk about, uh, I'm sorry, what's the, what's the vector picture? valued Loran polynomial. <laughs> sorry, the vector valued Loran polynomial sy I mean, systems, toric vector bundles, and matroid. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, to the organizers for uh, giving me a chance to talk about this and also for organizing this uh, great focus program. I attended a, a few of the workshops and I benefited a lot from the talks and also talking to the uh, people here. Thank you very much. Uh, and so uh, this is what I'm talking about is a work in progress. It's supposed to be uh, uh, finished earlier, but it's, as you know, always finishing writing up things takes longer than one thinks. And uh, I was, since a few years ago, uh, starting with this combinatorial algebraic geometry uh, thematic program, I got uh, obsessed with, uh, somewhat obsessed with uh, toric vector bundles, which are equivalent vector bundles and toric varieties. And uh, trying to understand better the combinatorics. Uh, and uh, so lots, lot of my work has been in that direction in recent years. And this, uh, this work I'm talking about is basically a result of trying to make Askold Khovansky interested in toric vector bundles. And as soon as he uh, 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 gets his attention on something, he has new, he finds new interesting theorems. <laughs> Okay, so this is an extension of Newton polyhedra theory. So uh, Newton polyhedra theory, which is a, a, in a, a fancy language of toric varieties, is about line bundles or divisors on toric varieties. Uh, 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 this this work is extension of that to vector bundles. But uh, I'll uh, try uh, in the to uh, stay away from fancier language of vector bundles and just be in uh, of talk about polynomials and linear equations and that stuff. By the way, I forgot to explicitly say this is a joint work with uh, Asphalt Kowalski and Hunter Spink from University of Toronto. As is the tradition, this is picture of my coll collaborator. This is Asphalt and Hunter. <laughs> Uh, so just uh, uh, the, the Newton name Newton comes from Newton polygon, which Newton in, uh, introduced uh, uh, for solving uh, two variable polynomials, solving x in term, uh, y in terms of x uh, uh, as a series, and then it becomes a, a series with fractional exponents. And it's a beautiful uh, idea, and it's basically Newton's method from calculus uh, applied to series or some uh, non-Archimedean version of uh, Newton uh, method from cal calculus. But uh, uh, what we'll be interested in is in Newton Politov as a, a global concept, not a local concept, which is about local branches of a, a algebraic function. So uh, this, uh, I'm not sure exactly about the history, but what I talk about in this brief review, is mostly work of uh, Moscow, a school of Newton polyhedra theory. Uh, prominent ones are Askol Kowalski, uh, David Bernstein, and uh, Koshnirenko. Okay. So notation. So T would be a capital T is algebraic torus. Everything I talk about is over complex numbers, but the base field is not that important. But for simplicity, complex numbers. And then x to the alpha represent shorthand for a monomial, x1, a1, x n, a n. Alpha represents an exponent or an integer integral point, and x point represents a point in the torus. Character lattice of the torus I write as z to the n usually. And the Laurent polynomial, I write it as some. Uh, C, uh, sum over C alpha X to the alpha. So these are monomials with coefficient C alpha in the Laurent polynomials. Or for short, I write C of T for the Laurent polynomial ring. And then Newton polytope of a Laurent polynomial is just convex hull of the exponents. 
exponents that appear with non-zero coefficients is a convex polytope in Rn with uh, integer uh, vertices. Okay, and then if we fix a, a subset A of Zn, okay, this is Canada, I have to say Zn. Uh, a finite subset of Zn. Uh, so I define a sub, uh, finite dimensional subspace of Laurent polynomials, which have, uh, which whose exponents are from A. Just I write uh, F po polynomials whose exponents are from A. It's a finite dimensional number. Of, dimension is di number of exponents or number of points in A. Okay. So we basically we want to look at the hypersurface defined by f of x, but we are allowing the coefficients to vary and uh, be, say, in general position or generic. And this subspace C of t, this uh, Laurent polynomial has the natural torus action by t acting on itself. And t invariant subspaces of uh, vector subspaces of Laurent polynomials are exactly this L of a. And A is the set of weights for the action on that invariant subspace, okay? And convex hull of A is the Newton polytope of a general or generic polynomial from L sub A. These are, I hope, pretty standard or easy to follow concepts, okay? And then what is important for main subject of a study in Newton polyhedra theory uh, uh, slash toric varieties is and a slash tropical geometry, if you like, uh, is you pick uh, you pick bunch of Laurent polynomials from different subspaces uh, L sub A I, and then you look at the uh, sub variety defined by intersection of this R hypersurfaces, where R I'm taking to be less than or equal to n. So. At most n equations uh, in n unknowns, R equations, n unknowns, equations are Laurent polynomials, and we allow the coefficient, we fix the exponents of each equation, but we allow the coefficients to vary generically or be random or whatever you like to call it. Yes? In, you mentioned tropical geometry. How is that connected to the limit that you take in order to tropicalize? Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the tropical, you mean the, if you, for simplicity, let's talk about one, one equation, so one hypersurface and then one polynomial F, and then the, the tropical variety of F or tropical hypersurface of F is related to the, its Newton polytope, and it's actually some, in somewhat dual to it. In fact, you take the dual fan, and you take the co-dimension uh, co uh, uh, one a skeleton of the fan. So, so Newton polytopes and tropical varieties are kind of dual objects. Yeah. And so the problem more specifically is that you fix uh, uh, you fix uh, I think I have hyper convex hull of uh, You fix uh, some finite subsets uh, in Zn or uh, Zn and uh, consider convex hull of each one. You say Newton polytope, and then you consider Laurent polynomials from each subspace or with fixed. Uh, exponents uh, from AI, and then you consider the sub variety defined by this R many equations. You can say that this uh, Z of F1, FR is a, a complete intersection. It's a, a in, if F, uh, Fs are in general position, uh, uh, because it's a co dimension R sub variety uh, uh, given by intersection of R hypersurfaces. So and then the question, the problem is that uh, find geometric or topological invariance of it, discrete ones. Uh, discrete geometric topological invariance of this sub variety in torus in terms of the Newton polytopes delta i. So it turns out that many questions are not uh, 
uh, can be answered not just in terms of AI, but they uh, depend on the convex hull of AI. So that's an interesting feature. We have seen a lot of places in toric geometry that convexity becomes important. Anyhow, the celebrated and uh, crown of uh, the uh, Newton polyhedral theory is the theorem sometimes called Bernstein Kushnerenko theorem, sometimes called Bernstein Kushnerenko Hovansky. Uh, it, Hovansky definitely played a major role, but he was so modest that didn't originally ask for his name to appear <laughs> in the. Uh, so uh, it's referred to uh, sometimes as BKK theorem. Uh, uh, so this concerns that you have n equations are uh, n equations n unknowns and you have so n uh, Newton polytopes uh, and I write two versions of it. You have uh, all the uh, Newton polytopes are the same. This is the original version discovered by Kushnirenko and then the ge more general version when the Newton polytopes are allowed to be different. So first all of the Newton, all of the polynomials have the same support or same set of exponents. Then you have n equations uh, which all have same Newton polytopes and gener with generic coefficients. Then the number, uh, this sub variety is just a finite number of points. The number of points in this sub variety is n factorial Euclidean volume of the uh, Newton polytope or convex hull. And then if you have uh, uh, hopefully a lot of you have seen this theorem before. Uh, this is a fancy language is about degree of vector uh, line bundles and uh, uh, toric varieties. Uh, uh, and, and if they are different, Newton polytopes are different, you have to replace volume uh, with a mixed volume of the corresponding Newton polytopes. Should I briefly say what mixed volume is or everybody is familiar with it? So mixed volume is an, uh, uh, you have operation of Minkowski sum of polytopes and it's a, a, a volume with respect to Minkowski sum is a degree n polynomial on the space of polytopes. And then you can make it into a n linear function on the space of polytopes, which is called a mixed volume. Uh, I wrote a quick example here. Uh, so if you take two dimensional case and then you take two triangles uh, of size D1, D2. Uh, if you write on that formula, it recovers a Bezu theorem. So the number of solutions is D1, D2. It's important, so which is product of degrees. It's not exactly Bezu theorem, it's Bezu theorem in uh, generic Bezu theorem because Bezu theorem says number of intersections of two curves of degree D1, D2 inside projective plane counting multiplicity is the product. Here we are taking generic curves. So there is no intersection at infinity uh, and there are no multiplicities. Multiplicities are one. Okay. And then Hovansky in his uh, classic papers, which go back to 50s uh, theory and th papers go back to about 50 years ago in the 70s, uh, uh, computes, uh, geometric genus, arithmetic genus, topological, Euler characteristic, blah, blah, for a Z of F1, FR, where R is less than uh, or equal to N. So for a sub variety defined by R equations in terms of uh, combinatorics of polytopes, this Newton polytopes. Okay, no use for you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, for an example of this, uh, uh, one of the is geometric genus, or in the case of curves, is the usual genus that one knows from uh, Riemann surfaces or, or compact uh, curves. Or, uh, so is uh, so if you have one polynomial or, or, uh, which defines a hypersurface. And then, you t and then it's generic with respect to its Newton polytope, or it's a generic element of uh, this subspace of uh, polynomials. Uh, the, or the geometric genus is number of lattice points inside the interior of the polytope, uh, uh, interior of the polytope. And again, 
if you consider CP2 and the curve in CP2 in, in of degree D, this recovers a generic curve in of degree D in CP2. This recovers the classic formula D minus one times D minus two over two. So beautiful uh, theory and beautiful. And uh, this works of Kowalski have been used by v uh, Victor Batirev in his famous work on mirror symmetry for toric varieties. And just about, uh, uh, Askold always likes to uh, present things in the simplest language for him and most transparent. And his standards are very high in terms of simplicity. So every, almost everything I have seen from him is in terms of high school mathematics. <laughs> uh, either uh, uh, polynomials or simple calculus. <laughs> Okay, you need to know complex numbers also. Uh, so, but in a language of uh, uh, algebraic, geom fancier algebraic geometry, we have a toric variety with a fan, uh, with a fan and uh, arm, uh, many equivalent line bundles. Uh, and uh, to each line bundle, you assign this Newton polytope, which actually is, uh, uh, the moment polytope of a uh, toric variety with a certain symplectic form if the line bundles are ample. Okay, so I'm talking really about ample line bundles, uh, uh, which Sue was talking about. And then you can consider intersection of uh, R uh, divisors of the line bundles or uh, se sections of the line bundle uh, and in general position and ask for discrete invariance of this uh, sub variety in the tor in inside toric variety. So some uh, some of the questions are same as uh, some answers are exactly the same as the case when you are asking for uh, this locus inside torus, which is an open subset, open dense subset of the toric variety. Some answers are different, but anyhow, this question uh, discrete invariance of that z of s and uh, the other question about systems of Laurent polynomials are very, very closely related. Sometimes the answers are the same. And just remark that uh, this subspace of Laurent polynomials with given exponents is uh, ex basically, if A is the lattice points in your moment or Newton polytope uh, uh, is exactly uh, the isomorphic naturally to the global sections of your line bundle. And again, I'm talking about ample line bundle. And so what I'm going to talk about now, which is the newer, newer stuff is, uh, if you want, is the uh, Newton polyhedral theory for vector bundles on toric variety. But until the end of the talk, there will not I not really mention vector bundles. Okay, so first we fix, so I'm setting up the problem. Uh, and the new feature is that the sub varieties we talk about or want to compute their geometry or geometric invariance, topological invariance, may not be complete intersections anymore. So we are extending from uh, complete intersection to non complete intersection. Okay. So you fix the sub, uh, subspace, it's vector subspace C to the R, that's R dimensional subspace, independent from the torus which we, uh, we had before. Uh, just R is not dimension, R is less than or equal to N. So this represents, R represents number of equations or rank of the vector bundle. Okay, how much time? I have been talking for 18 minutes. Okay, not bad <laughs> so far. Uh, okay, so uh, again, we fix a set of weights or characters of the torus. And then for each character, I ask, uh, so this is part of the data or setting up the problem. Suppose we are given an arbitrary subspace, vector subspace of this C to the R, our uh, fixed vector space. Again, thinking of vector bundles, E is the uh, fiber of my vector bundle, which I haven't uh, uh, 
introduced really but if you are thinking about vector bundle this is the fiber of the vector bundle over identity in the torus okay but you can say all this stuff without mentioning vector bundle okay so suppose for each character uh, in my subset finite subset a i have a fixed vector subspace e alpha given so you have i have a a subspace arrangement, arrangement of subspace, each subspace labeled, and of, of course I take non-zero subspaces, uh, uh, each subspace labeled by some character. And <clears throat> then I form, I look at this uh, space of uh, polynomials with what with values in E. So I call them, or as would like to call them vector valued Laurent polynomials, just a sub vector space E tensor with Laurent polynomials tensor over C, of course, uh, or you can think of it as morphisms, uh, algebraic morphisms or polynomial maps from torus to E. And then I consider uh, an invariant subspace uh, in that vector, infinite dimensional vector space, which is uh, E alpha tensors X alpha and sum over them. It just means that polynomial uh, polynomials of the form Coefficients are ve vectors, uh, uh, of course, monomials are usual monomials x to the alpha, but coefficients are vectors coming from E. And for each x to the alpha, previously Newton polyhedra theory coefficient, which was a complex number was arbitrary. But here I'm just forcing it, to, uh, requiring it to be from my given subspace E alpha. So I, this is definition of a, a space of vector valued around polynomials. Okay, this uh, E alpha tensor X to alpha direct sum, they are exactly T invariant subspaces of vector valued Laurent polynomials. And then the question is uh, consider the sub variety defined by a generic element of L, uh, F of Z equal to zero, or any uh, Z in for Z in the torus. This is really just the torus. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so this is a vector equation. Uh, if you fix a basis for your vector space E, uh, it's uh, given by R many equations, but these equations, the coefficients are kind of linear, re related. The coefficients are related because I'm forcing the coefficients of X to the alpha to come from a given uh, subspace E alpha, but no restriction on E alpha. It can be any non-zero subspace. So as you can see, it's a very, very general setup. So the question now, extension of Newton polyhedra theory is that compute discrete uh, geometric topological invariant of this sub variety in terms of some uh, convex polytopes. So, now the next task is to see what is the uh, corresponding new notion of Newton polytope. And the, as I was saying at the beginning, the fancy version is that you have a toric variety with a, a vector bundle of rank R, which has a T linearization or T equivariant. And then you take uh, some a global section of your vector bundle, and then you look at the zero locus. Uh, it turns out that in this above setup, I'm uh, talking about globally generated vector bundles. So, okay. The, uh, ZF is just, uh, ZF is just, uh, where this uh, given by this vector valued equation. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I should write more, one F. I didn't write, sorry, F. Uh, F is for F of X is uh, E alpha X alpha. So it's a linear combination of uh, e alphas, which E alpha is uh, from uh, X alpha, uh, e, the give capital E alpha, some given subspace. Uh, uh, and then the coefficients are X alpha, if you like. Or... Uh, 
is the is the f going to vary uh, yes 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 uh, so and then i want to have f to be generic so in, in classical newton polyhedral theory you fix the exponents yeah. okay. the coefficients are uh, a scalars or complex numbers and then you vary them or put them in general position. You have a, one coefficient for each monomial in classical theory. Now you have a vector for each monomial, but the coefficient is restricted to vary on a given subspace. Okay. But uh, the, uh, so you have a start with a subspace arrangement. It uh, for, uh, for, uh, restricts the choice of coefficient. So inside the subspace, that coefficient can vary. Ve vector coefficient can vary inside the subspace. And then I'm lo looking at a generic choice for a generic choice of coefficients in the, each subspace. Yes? Okay. So since you say this is a generalization, like I'm, I just want to make sure I understood. Uh, if you take the e, the e alpha to be each like linearly independent or, or a direct sum, can you find like the result from before with uh, like taking f1, f2, fr? Uh, uh, yes, yes. So as I, I wanted to explain in my next slide, the Newton polyhedra theory is a special case of this situation if each of e alphas which in general in this more general setup can be arbitrary uh, arrangement of subspaces uh, if they are just restricted to be coordinate subspaces then uh, they, you get recover exactly the newton polyhedra theory okay, and, and alternative setup which uh, Hunter, Hunter Sting likes better because it comes from matroid theory <laughs> is uh, you start with uh, some finite number of vectors in your su subspace E and then you look at equations uh, and then to each vector you fix that uh, arrangement of vectors E1, EM, EM can, M can be arbitrarily large and then to each vector, uh, and then it, you can call it a matroid or whatever you want. But when you call it a matroid, it means that combinatorially you only care about the dependency, independency of linear dependence, independence of subsets of your set. Uh, and then to each of these vectors, you assign some collection of characters, finite set of characters uh, in uh, your character lattice and which naturally then is assigned a subspace of uh, Laurent polynomials. <laughs> uh, and so you look at equations uh, which are tens uh, your given vector, tensor a po Laurent polynomial coming from that uh, given, uh, with given exponents, which depends on EI, okay. so. Uh, and then it's not, it's very elementary to see that this setup and the previous setup are the same, but there is in this setup, there is the extra choice of a matroid, which is uh, not canonical. Uh, for example, you can, so just to take, to give you idea what kind of equations we are considering, take vector rank is two, E two dimensional, torus is two dimensional, you pick, just some random vectors. And then for each vector, you put some Laurent polynomial with given exponents or given Newton polytope. And then you basically are summing up this uh, combination of vectors, which could be dependent, independent in this picture. They are all, they are together, they are dependent, of course, four vectors in two dimensional space. But the coefficients are Laurent polynomials with given Newton polytopes. Okay, so, and then you let this equal to zero and then you want to see what kind of uh, curve this defines. Okay, so the, 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 whole, uh, the whole point here as, 
uh, uh, I guess Tony was wondering is uh, the whole point in Newton polyhedra theory, classical one, and, it, and it, in this more general one, is a genericity or uh, the, your equation to be in general position, which is which means in the fancy language about uh, a divisor or, of a line bundle uh, or generic section of a divisor uh, of a of a line bundle, blah blah. Uh, so uh, uh, here we have a subspace of vector valued polynomials, and then we are looking at generic equations. There. Anyhow, so now back to the, the question of what is the uh, new, new, Newton polytope. So if we uh, start with uh, subspace E, keep in mind we had subspace E, which you can think of as C to the R. And L was an invariant subspace. Uh, uh, I'm just, it's my short hand for that subspace arrangement E alpha or E alpha tensor X alpha. Uh, this time we uh, assign a sequence of polytopes, R many polytopes to this given subspace. Uh, it's a kind, a kind of a, a generalization of, you have R equations in Newton polyhedra theory, and then you have Newton polytope of, you have R many polytopes, Newton polytope of each uh, equation, okay? But now this polytopes, which we call them characteristic sequence of polytopes of L, or characteristic polytopes of L, uh, they contain some linear algebra information. It's not just convex hull uh, or in combinatorics, uh, whenever there is a linear dependence appearing, it's about matrix. Uh, so we define it as follows. So you look at a collection of, uh, Uh, I many characters from your finite subset to the I. So the uh, I tuple of characters from uh, from your finite set of characters. And then you see if the corresponding subspaces have independent vectors. So if you can find V1, VI from corresponding subspaces, the ar subspace arrangement that are linearly independent. If you can do that, that's, I tuple of characters is allowed, and then you record the sum of those characters, I many characters. And then, uh, and then you take convex hull of all these uh, I fold sums that are allowed or admissible, and then that's your I polytope. The first polytope is just a convex hull of uh, your A, capital A, or curly A set of characters. Delta two is some subset of co convex all of 2a and so on. Convex all of a plus a and so on. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I think that's a good idea. I should turn it off. Okay, so this way we get a sequence of polytopes and then the theorem is that, uh, this is an uh, extension of VKK theorem. So if R is equal to N, and then you have one of this, uh, so your rank of vector bundle or rank of equation is N, and then you have one of these invariant subspaces, uh, the equation, you have N equations, N unknowns for generic F, it defines a finite number of points. The question is what is this number, finite number of points? So the uh, theorem is that the number of points or number of solutions of that vector equation is less than or equal to some mixed volume. And in, if F is generic, exactly as in the Newton BKK theorem, it's equal to the n factorial mixed volume. Again, how it generalizes BKK? Uh, it needs a little bit of explanation, but, mm. but uh, left-hand side, uh, 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 okay, I, I, I think it will be explained, kind of explained in the next slide. Uh, 
so but the catch is that instead of delta one delta two delta n you have to take the consecutive differences of this polytope and the difference is in the sense of minkowski sum of polytopes so again uh, i'm not sure if everybody's familiar with no a lot of people i'm sure are familiar probably know more than me about this uh, story of polytopes but let me just briefly say uh, there is a notion of virtual polytope uh, polytopes which I, on Rn, which I denote by P, the space of uh, polytopes in Rn uh, uh, is closed under Minkowski sum. Uh, and uh, is that every polytope does not have an inverse. Of course, the identity is origin, but you don't have inverses. You sum up two polytopes, you get a bigger polytope, you don't get origin. <laughs> uh, uh, so you can, but this addition, is cancellative, so you have a cancellative semigroup. You can extend it by introducing formal neg inverses to this vector space of virtual polytopes. Okay, so virtual polytopes are formal differences of polytopes. And they are dual uh, object to piecewise linear functions on dual Rn. So this uh, is dual to the convex or concave piecewise linear functions, and these are uh, all piecewise linear functions. <clears throat> and so, so you have this mixed volume of this virtual polytope. So if you don't like uh, virtual polytopes, you can just expand that equation and uh, it would be a huge uh, alternating sum of these polytopes, deltas. Okay. For people who are familiar with uh, mean tropical varieties or, or, or Minkowski weights or weighted fans uh, or polytope algebra. Uh, uh, this gives us, uh, uh, this formula gives us exactly what is, the, in case that rank is not exactly in the above formula is rank is exactly and you have finite number of points. But if rank is less than n, then you have a sub variety. And then that sub variety, you can describe what is its image in the ring of conditions or tropical ring of weighted fans or so on. It's a product of the tropical fans of these polytopes. Okay, so it gives the explicit formula for uh, this sub variety uh, inside the ring of conditions or tropical or polytope algebra or whatever people call it. Uh, in, for again, for people who are familiar with, uh, oh, I don't have much time left. Uh, for people who are familiar with uh, uh, tropical geometry, ev almost everything can be computed in if you know the tropical variety with the weights of a sub variety. But that's a difficult question in general to find or compute the fan tropical variety and the weights. Uh, and so that's the whole catch. But the polytopes are much more ha handable and easier to get out of your equations. So this is uh, this is telling you that these polytopes basically contain all intersection theory information you are in you want about your sub variety. Okay. So. Uh, uh, so the the way as I was saying that if you have big classic BKK theorem or Newton polyhedra theory, you have a collection of fixed collection of polytopes or subsets of characters monomials, and uh, if uh, you take each e alpha to be a coordinate subspace, and then alpha uh, alpha is from the union of your uh, Newton polytopes or characters, uh, then uh, uh, this ZFF was your vector valued equation is exactly the e solution of F1, Fn equation and generic Newton polytopes, Laurent polynomials with given Newton polytopes. I'm out of short of time, so it's easy to check. If you like, you can check it yourself. And then the, another case, which is very well studied in uh, a, Tropical geometry and matroid theory, etc., hyperplane arrangements uh, is when you have a, a collection of 
uh, Laurent polynomials, again, we say fit fix uh, Newton polytopes, as in BKK theorem. But this time, instead of counting the solutions uh, uh, in the whole torus, you want to count solution uh, res uh, restricted to a linear subspace of torus. So uh, the whole the story of toric varieties is exponential. You talk about monomials. So uh, the, if you are restricting it to a linear subspace, the previous BKK theorem or degree of a toric variety, blah, blah, does not immediately work. So you need more work to answer what is the number of solutions uh, of a system of equations uh, if you have restricted to a linear subspace in the torus. And this is an example of the previous setup I was talking about. But I, as far as I know, I'm not as familiar as I should be with the literature in hyperplane arrangement, but uh, th this is uh, known. And uh, the polytopes, uh, uh, as a special case of uh, the polytopes I introduced are given, can be recovered from the hyperplane arrangement. So basically you have a system of polynomials, Laurent polynomials, but instead of your usual coordinates in the torus, you have some linear parameters some, or affine linear parameters, Laurent polynomials in affine linear parameters, and then you get a mixed volume formula for that. Sorry, I, and then just maybe mention in one minute. So you have Alexandro Fenchel inequality for, which is a famous inequality for mixed volume of polytopes or convex bodies. Khovansky test inequality says that the same inequality holds for intersection of ample divisors on a uh, irreducible variety. And Newton Akunkov theory gives a simple proof of that. And uh, what we show is that uh, this polytopes, uh, th this virtual polytope consecutive differences also satisfy. Uh, uh, Alexandro Fenchel inequality. It is not a color corollary of Alexandro Fenchel inequality because uh, you are having you are ha you have virtual polytopes, not usual polytopes. And finally, the whole story extends to non-representable matroid, and this extends that you have a, a Alexandro Fenchel inequality in uh, this setting. Uh, in this setting, um, uh, which extends the famous uh, Alexander Fenchel inequality or log concavity results of uh, Junha and collaborators, uh, but uh, the, our proof, or which is uh, still in progress, the writing is in progress, uh, basically reduces the statement uh, uh, to. Uh, the statement proved by Junha. So it's a, we have to reduce it. I still use the heavy machinery uh, that June and collaborators develop. But it's the, uh, as far as I know, it's the most general Alexander function or log concavity that uh, can be formulated in the setup of matroids. And maybe I say a few words about the setting of matroid is basically the same, just the same. So you have a finite subset of characters. You have a matroid for each element, for each character, you assign an arbitrary subset of your matroid. And then you get a sub a arrangement of subsets of your matroid. And you define your polytopes in the same way. Everything is the same, except that number of solutions or sub variety doesn't make sense because you just have an abstract matroid. But the polytopes still make sense because they are defined in terms of dependency. And as, as soon as you have the polytopes, you have you can write down the same Alexander Fenchel inequality. What is what does it give you specific to the matroid in that case? What information about the matroid? Does the matroid the, is a subset yeah. with given with the notion of uh, dependence independence. Yeah. yeah. So. This is where the 
because in the definition of those, those characteristic polytopes, you had to the depend independence dependence notion appeared. You had you had to pick a vector from each subspace such that they are independent. You can just repeat word by word. You can repeat that in this. So instead sense. of counting solutions, that's counting number of linear. No, uh, we we just if uh, there is no counting solutions if you have abstract matroid because there is no yes, equation. That's what I'm saying. Yes, there is no equation to right. count so, anything. So it's counting something. Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if this counts anything, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, oh. or abstract non-representable matroid. Yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. anyhow. It's you can say that it's you can interpret it as some intersection number in. Uh, some chowing of a matroid in that sense, it's some intersection number in su inside some toric variety. Just give information about the characteristic polynomial. Uh, so the, if you do this, so basically this is, uh, if you do this in for the uh, replace, for the case of that I uh, explained for hyperplane arrangement, which your weights are uh, this, collection of weights which you pick is uh, just I think a standard simplex uh, if you do this in that case uh, uh, you get basically that's about this uh, Jun Han collaborators work and so uh, yeah so the hyperplane arrangement case the extension of it to the non-representable matroids is this work? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. So the uh, uh, so that case is about uh, characteristic polynomial of matroids. If you take the non-representable situation of the hyperplane arrangement case, I explained. Uh, it's also related to. This result, our result is related to and generalizes the setup of uh, uh, Hunter, Hunter uh, and collaborators work on tautological uh, classes of matroids. So these are all related. Okay, their result is for representable. Uh, so they introduce a vector, vector bundle for each representable matroid, tautological bundle. Uh, but they introduce a, a when the, not, there is you have a non-representable matroid you don't have a ve actual vector bundle, but you do have the some uh, combinatorial classes or some uh, elements in the chowering of permutahedral variety. Well, working on fields, metal stuff. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's just connecting all the different works into a big and a kind of natural umbrella, maybe. I have more to say, but I think I'm out of time, so I stop here.